welcome back to The Gifted Ones, and I'm your host, Liz Throp. Today's guest is sure to pique your interests if you have a family pet. Have you ever wondered what they would say if they could speak to you? Well, my guest today, she's going to shed some light on that. Mary Beth Haynes' passion lies in making a difference for animals and their gifts to humanity. She adv advocates on behalf of the language they speak. Since 2012, Mary Beth has been working professionally with animals and their humans who love them. She has been recognized as a highly regarded animal communicator, pet bereavement grief specialist, ordained minister, international author, and speaker. Being an author of three published books, one of which is titled The Power of Pets, written after the loss of her beloved cat, Kitty. She has, at this point, discovered her path to help others heal after the loss of a pet. Mary Beth doesn't just communicate with animals. She also helps you learn how to communicate with your pets. Her goal is to help both the animal and the owner understand each other better. She also teaches a healing modality called Aqualead that is a wonderful companion for anyone who wants to deepen their relationship with their feather, fur, or scaly babies. Mary Beth, welcome to The Gifted Ones. Thank you so much for having me here, Liz. I'm really excited. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how excited I was to have you as a guest today because I myself have had many pets mm -hmm. and um, the last one was my cat and when she passed, I stopped doing the pet thing because it was so painful. Yeah. So when I discovered you and what you do, um, it just, it blew my socks away. <laughs> Never thought of it before. So, like, without further ado, let's start with the first question that uh, I'm sure everybody's asking. Help us understand how this works. So, how animal communication works? Yeah. Wow. So, do you have about? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> well, you know what? Animal communication actually is very simple. It's our minds that makes it hard. Because right. when we go to school, when we are growing up in life, this isn't something that we're taught. It isn't something that is mainstream yet. Yeah. Um, and But it is something that we all have. So yeah. a lot of times people will say, well, you seem to be gifted in that and that, you know, but I, I'm not. But the thing is, is oh, yes, you are. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody can do this. Yeah. It's just a matter of setting up the intention and, and setting the space in order to do so. Um, so how does this work? Basically, when, when you and I are talking to each other right now, we're communicating. Yes. So we're actually exchanging energy. Now the energy is us with our language that we use, our voice that we're projecting, our body language, all of that. And that's all part of communication. When it comes to animals, animals don't have the, the human language to, to speak. Right. They, don't, they don't open their mouths and say, hi, Liz, how you doing today? Yeah. But they do communicate through different means. Yes. When I was young, um, I used to hear the word telepathy. And I used to think, <laughs> telepathy, that's crackers. Like, it just <laughs> did not, uh, you know, exactly. it was just sounded, sounded cuckoo. But... You know, telepathy actually just means feeling at a distance. I love that. And so love that's that essentially saying. what it is. It's, it's feeling at a distance and it's connecting with the energy of the animal to be able to hear their voice. That's so beautiful. So beautiful. So uh, an example could be, say, I'm calling you on your cell phone. So I got my cell phone and I'm dialing your number and then your cell phone rings. Well, that signal has to go to a cell tower, which then has to go to your phone in order for it to ring. And then we need to, when we talk, that energy is actually being transmitted through those signals. Right. So we don't see those signals, but we know they're there mm -hmm. because you can hear my voice and I can hear yours. Yes. So there's no difference when we're communicating with animals and sentient beings. It's just... We don't see it with our physical eyes, right? but it is there in, in energy. Love it. So true. I think all living things, um, plants, everything Absolutely. communicates, right? So Absolutely. trees, you name it. But how amazing to actually use your gift um, specifically for animals and, and pets and 
it's just it's so beautiful to me that's why i was so thank excited you. to have you here today thank you how did you discover um basically that you could communicate with animals like what was the first thing like how you went oh my gosh i'm actually communicating that's a that's a that's a good question um it was a it was a, a progress right so right. when i was a little girl at the age of two my parents moved my brother sister and i to a hobby farm oh. and it wasn't too far from here actually oh, okay. um, so this is kind of my old stomping ground so and I lived there from the age of two to about 22 and I had animals of every kind and these animals were my family they were my yes. they were my pets you know we we I taught them school I was their teacher um, you know they were my students but really I was their students and they were my teacher <laughs> So true. Yeah, yeah. And we hung out together and there was just this really great connection. So I've had a connection with animals from a very young age. When I was l very small and growing up, I used to see spirit all the time. I used to hear spirit. I used to see spirit, but it frightened me. Yeah. And I didn't quite understand it back then. So as I got older, I kind of shut it down. Yeah. And then... Happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then in my uh, early 20s, my father passed away and all of a sudden the dial just turned right on again. Yeah. And from there, um, with the other animals in my life, in 2011, I had uh, a cat named Kitty who was the inspiration of my first book, The Power of Pets. And after he passed, there's something was different. So I had gone through loss yeah. many times in my life, but this particular one was, it was different. Yeah. It, there was something that it was a little harder to get over. It was, it was, and that really kind of opened the floodgates to truly understand that what I've been feeling and, and sensing and experiencing all these years um, was really communication. Of course. And so as that happened with the other animals in my life, um, all of a sudden I was like, okay, it's getting stronger, it's getting stronger. So Perfect. when I connect with animals, I connect with them in different ways. So you and I are talking here right now and a lot of times that's how it's like when I'm communicating with an animal. I hear their voice just like you and I are talking now. Right. Except instead of it being audible in my physical ears, it's audible in my head, yes. so to speak. It's the same how it works as a, for a psychic. Exactly. Like it, it, it's no different, right? Exactly. So exactly. that's connecting with the energy. You're just communicating with animals. Perfectly said. Perfectly beautiful. said. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Well... The next question I have is is really, you know, just out of curiosity. Is there a specific, like, what types of pets have you worked with, but are any of them more difficult than others to communicate with? I would say that none are, there isn't any more that are difficult than others. What makes it difficult is I'm human, and sometimes my human head can get in the way, Yes. right? And so sometimes when I remind myself to move that out of the way, um, it's it's usually me that would make it difficult. Now, in saying that, though, animals are like people with regards to our personalities, yes, of right? Yes, they are. So yeah. they all have their different personalities. So I've had animals that I've communicated with where they're just <laughs> they're talk 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 talk, and I can't get a word in edgewise. And then I have other animals that are just like, hello, <laughs> okay, is, do you want to talk? okay Aww. right you know things like that and yeah. so it really depends and then i have other animals that are i like to to call it more uh very uh, a deep deep soul so they're they're very much full of wisdom and they're very much full of of um meaning of life and I love it you know all that stuff and so uh they share that too and then i have other animals that that are more, no, I'm just here to learn. I'm just here to to experience this. And wow. so it's it's quite interesting the different the that, different dynamics yeah. based on the based on I'm the animal. Kidding. Wow. What would you say is the number one complaint that people's pets have? In my experience, I have never ever had a complaint from an animal. And they when you told never. me that, when, uh, when we spoke about this, that's why I had to ask this question. I was like, wow. Because, you know, like that's like, uh, I, I really thought that pets would have grievances. Like, you don't walk me enough. 
I need more bacon, you know, whatever it is that, that they need. And your answer, I got to let you, I interrupted you. So carry That's on. Okay. Sorry, yeah. blew me away. Yeah, no, pets have preferences. They have preferences and they like to make those preferences known. Um, sometimes pets that, that, you know, how we can be a little more, uh, dramatic in, yeah. in certain things pets can bring that through okay. and they can make it seem like you know what you're not feeding me enough or i want you know um and really it's it's their preferences of wanting more um but for for complaining um and i've had some people kind of want to argue me on this because they're like no he specifically did that on purpose and he oh. did it just to spite me um and it's like that's your own ego talking yeah yeah <laughs> and and it was more of there that was his, that animal's way of communicating his want or need at that time yeah, yeah. um but in the communication with the animals that that i've connected with um there has there has never been a complaint they are all about love and they come from love yeah. and they definitely have preferences but they never complain. Well, one of the things um, you did mention um, when we spoke was that they are always more concerned about their human very much. than anything else that they need or want. Very much. Which I thought very was just much. beautiful. Yes. Makes perfect sense because anybody who's ever owned a pet, they're, they're selfless. Yeah. Especially a dog. You know, um, cats, cats have their little quirky personalities, but they're just little loving beings mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but dogs are so selfless yes they just truly are so and you know i've worked with a lot of different animals i too grew up on a farm right um and animals were my best friends as well pigs and chickens and ducks and and it and, and ponies but um it just blows me away that their concern is for our happiness mm -hmm. for our joy yes Yes. Incredible. What an incredible job you do to get to talk to them. Anyways, <laughs> I had to share that because when you told me that, I was blown away. Do pets that have worked with, that you've worked with, have a common request like what their favorite food is maybe? Like do they ever say, you know, make sure she gets this specific thing or stop feeding me this? Does that ever happen? A lot of times I'll get like this taste in my mouth and because I don't, I've never really tasted pet food, but I don't think I'd like to try and taste pet food. Like, I don't know if I'd want to know what that taste is. So, so Gee, they buddy. actually are, are very, um, uh, what's my word? Um, uh, they're very mindful of that with me, which oh, is awesome. Them. And I love yeah. them for that. So they give me this particular taste in my mouth and my mouth kind of starts to salivate. And I always know that they're talking about a certain food that they're, they're wanting or that they love. Um, and then usually the words come, like there was one uh animal and and he was he was specific he was very specific the taste was coming and but i kept hearing milk bone and dental bone milk oh. bone and dental bone and he just kept going and going and going i'm like <laughs> okay i need to talk about milk bone and dental bone right now and his human started laughing because she she was like that was his favorite treat when he was alive no. and so it was um so they they absolutely will you know talk about you know what what they like or you know that they want more or things yeah. like that um and sometimes they will say and i find mostly more it's like when when we as humans are trying to hide medication in foods or things oh, like right. that never even thought of that yeah because they always of, know yeah how do they know yeah yeah they know they yeah. know so and funny. so they give they give uh, me that that blah taste in my mouth and that you know that kind of thing but one one cool thing uh with you with what you said is that they know is that because of telepathy right it's feeling at a distance so let's say i'm giving my animal uh, medication and i'm putting it in his food well i have that image that i'm holding in my mind yes, so even though i'm going course. here you go it's yeah, yummy yeah. yum yum yeah, yum yeah. right <laughs> my dog's gonna know oh. because i'm holding the image yeah of, don't 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 find that that's you know, right it's, it's all yummy here yeah our animals know oh it's they so totally funny know. i had They're a dog masters. that would not eat carrots like wouldn't <laughs> eat carrots and if i made like a stew and there was tiny tiny little bits of carrot in it that dog would separate all the food and leave just a plate full of carrot little shavings of carrot it was like how do you even do that it's so funny like you know you don't like that 
and it would be Put covered in gravy side. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they knew. So it's just so funny. Like, well, you you brought up the 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 fact that you talk with um, our pets on the other side. So that's got to be the next question. Um, most people watching this are, you know, probably thinking, well, this is great. I can communicate with my living pet, but you also communicate with pets that have passed over. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So with, with pets that are in spirit, one thing that animals have taught me and that they've said to me a lot is that I am still very much here. I've just changed form. So I've moved from physical energy to now spiritual energy. And so when I communicate with them in spirit, I just, I, the way that I like to envision it, because I, I, uh, visual really helps me learn, is I just tweak my dial just a little bit. Because when I'm communicating with, a, with an animal that's here yes. on earth, I'm connecting with their physical energy, right? Yes. So when an animal's in spirit, I need to connect with them in a different energy. So it comes through through mediumship. So the information that I receive becomes downloaded through thoughts and feelings and, um, and, and words that are coming through. And a lot of times with mediumship, with animals and spirit, it comes through more for pictures and feelings that I get. Beautiful. Um, and everybody can do that too. Everybody can do that too. The, the main thing, Liz, is, is setting the intention. Of course it is. When we set the intention, is. we create the space. Yeah. And um, again, it's a very easy thing to say, and it's a very easy thing to do. Right. Everybody would be psychic in a medium if they knew how easy it is. Exactly. But they just, there's a, there's, um, a sense of make-believe. They mm -hmm. don't think that they're really communicating or that it's a fear. Yes. I don't want to conjure up something scary. Um, but, you know, with pets and, well, with humans as well, when we lose a loved one, um, the connection is, like I always tell people, if I was to put you in the room blindfolded and send in your child and then send in somebody else's child, you would know which one I was sending in Absolutely. based on the energy that you're yeah. feeling. Yeah. And it's no different when, you know, your, your loved one's on the other side, you're going to connect immediately with that energy because you get that energy. Absolutely. You're familiar with it. Yeah. Um, so with a pet who is a major part of our lives, they're like part of our, like, they're a part of the family and they're like one of our children. You would have no difference. It would be, but I, I never saw it like that before. And it's so funny because it's what I do for a living, right? But I never <laughs> saw it like that with animals. Now I can tell you from, with my own animals that I've had in the past, um, absolutely I connected emotionally and spirit, but I just never thought that it was something that you could do it, it, like what you're doing. It's just mind-blowing to me. I love that you're doing it. I love that you're doing it. <laughs> well, I thank the animals because it's the animals that have really taught me how to do this. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. so beautiful. Well, I guess the next question is, um, is there a way for, like we kind of discussed it there, but is there like, other than just accept, um, you know, that it's happening, is there a specific way that people at home can sort of start communicating better with their pets so that they can start hearing them or, or communicating better? So number one, set that intention. You know, talk to your pets. Let them know when you're leaving. Let them know when you're planning on coming back home. Um, have family things together. Uh, do things together. In fact, um, on my website, there's, there's, uh, you can get a free download of this, this book of things that you can do with your pet. That's perfect. So, What's the book title? And the book title is Seven Surefire Ways to Strengthen the Bond with Your Pet. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And they can get that on your website, which we will have up on the, um, on the show so people can go to your website. Now, you also wrote a couple of books yourself. I have, Can yes. we take a second just to talk about those? Sure. Do you, you have them with you. I brought them so with me. So why don't absolutely. you just show us them and explain what each book, what each book's going to bring to the table for somebody who's interested. Awesome. Thank you. So we talked about Kitty and yeah. we talked about how he was the inspiration behind this book. So this book, The Power of Pets, Some Effective Tools to Heal from Pet Loss. And basically all my books take, take you on a journey. So Beautiful. this particular book is where you're on a journey, um, you're walking along a path, and you come to a crossroads. And at that crossroads, you can go left or right, but you realize that actually there's seven different directions that you can take. 
and that there's no wrong direction to take because each one is one of the seven tools. And Perfect. so um, it's a wonderful book to be able to help you in healing from, from the death of a pet Beautiful. and to realize the gifts that they bring to us. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, the second one is From Empty to Empowered, and it is a journey to healing from unexpected pet loss. And after the first book came out, I had a lot of people reach out and say, that their pet died unexpectedly and they were holding a lot of guilt or they had a lot of questions. So this one was to help with that that sudden loss aspect. Yes. Um, and again, on a journey and we take that journey together um, through the book. Beautiful. And then the last one, my sister and I both co-authored together because oh, she perfect. is a professional ventriloquist. So these are her puppets. This is McGraw the bird and Camilla the frog. And they, mm. this is for children. So they actually take the, the child uh, with them throughout this book, being able to identify their feelings and how, how they're feeling. So it's a, a nice workbook where they can actually put in uh, oh. and use the book and draw and, and talk about what their feelings are. That is so. absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. Because that is probably one of the hardest things. I remember when my, my dog passed away, my daughter was i believe six and this dog was her brother yes that they did not that child did not go anywhere without this dog like spiky has to come mom spiky right. and they they were inseparable and when he passed it was sudden and shocking and i was dealing with my own sadness and grief but to have something like that because i was trying to figure out how to explain this would have been her first death she'd ever experienced and it was like her brother was like she was an only child so that would have been so helpful um beautiful i'm so glad that you've done that for kids and parents that's beautiful thank you thank well um it makes me ah. <laughs> okay it's not just pets like our our beloved pets that you communicate with you also communicate with wild animals mm -hmm. so you know also animals in captivity and and you shared a very touching story um, and I'm gonna try and hold it together when you explain this one but you shared a, a story of Jasper the rabbit yes. with me and I'd love the folks at home to get the benefit of this story so could you please share that story? sure sure so one morning I was in between that sleep wake moment so um, I, I find that animals come to me a lot during the night. So it's not, I always have a pen and paper beside my bed because it's not unfamiliar to me to be woken up at three in the morning <laughs> or things like that. So I always write it down. Um, and this particular morning, it was very early morning and I had an animal reach out to me and it was a rabbit he reached out to me to get my attention and he really got my attention because the image that he sent so it was almost like i really need to get your attention um type of message so he sent an image of him and it it frightened me because it was an image of him uh being tested on in a in a laboratory and um, I invite everybody to stay with us because this is an inspiring um, yeah. story. So what happened was uh, I immediately got scared and shut it down because that was just my coping mechanism at that time. And I didn't know what to do because I thought I'm being reached out to by this beautiful rabbit for a reason. Um, what do I do? Yeah. So I work with with I like to call them my spiritual team and and I I just asked them I said I don't know what to do and they know I'm very big on free will of choice so they never tell me what to do um I don't think they would tell me what to do anyway yeah. but they did offer me the invitation and they said you know you did get this message um and it's up to you but if you wanted to see what it was about you can then decide what you want to do with it so I decided that this rabbit's reaching out to me for a reason. So I turned my dial back up again and I said that I am here and I'm here to listen. So once that was established and once the connection was established, I, I didn't see any more images or anything like that. Um, this rabbit said that his name was Jasper. He said that he was being tested on in a laboratory 
And he said that he came here to live his life as Jasper the rabbit and in the position of being a, a, a testing subject to make a difference. Um, mm -hmm. He came to help humanity in being able to change the way that we do things. And he was asking for help in being able to make his difference that he came here to make, but also to, he requested healing um, because of what he was going through. So not once did he complain. Not once did he say any horrible things that were happening. He said that he wanted to make a difference. And if I could send him healing, that would really help. So every day for about two, two and a half weeks, I connected with him and I said, Jasper, I'm here. Would you like to receive healing? And he every day would say, yes, I am open to receive. So beautiful. So I work with Aqua Elite Healing and I work with Reiki as well. So common, they work very nicely together. So I sent him both. And after about two and a half weeks, I was out in nature and he came strongly into my mind. And I thought, well, what a beautiful space to be able to send healing. So I asked him, Jasper, I'm here. Would you like to receive healing? But this time, instead of getting, yes, I'm open to receive, I got, I am contented. And I thought, oh, that's, that's different. What does that mean? And so I asked him and he said that his life was coming to an end. Um, he had done all he could. And he said that it was beautiful in the light. He asked if I could honor him by sharing with others so that we can envision a world where animals are free of that type of testing. And he said that when we can envision that, so he wants, it, he wants us to envision not what we don't want, he wants us to envision what we do want. And so that is, so that animals are not subjected to that anymore. So we want animals to have the freedom, we want animals to to be able to, to be in, in spaces of love. And before the connection ended with him, and I was keeping my eyes dry until now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, he said, thank you for honoring me and thank you for honoring other animals through me. And then he said, I am Jasper and I made a difference. And that was his purpose. And Beautiful. he was able to fulfill that purpose. Whew. Well, I don't know about anybody else at home right now, but whew. it's so powerful. Yes. So powerful. Um, you know, it's easy for me to see that with humans, because I work with humans specifically in my, in my field. But when it comes to animals, <clears throat> still trying to catch myself here um we just have like this you know we don't want to see them harmed or you know nobody wants to see anybody harmed or any living thing harmed but especially an animal that's in that capacity um still thinking of humans like i'm here to support them right beautiful okay <laughs> <laughs> deep breath deep breath yes exactly yeah um, I cannot end this show without asking you uh, one more question because all of us who have had pets and have lost them at some point um, probably think the same, want the same answer or want answers to this. Can you share with the viewers about the lessons that you have learned from end of life pets? And by that I mean um, an animal that's sick that we have no choice but to put down because we can't bear to see them suffer. There's so much guilt that, that comes with that. So if you could share that with our viewers, what, what you typically have discovered. One thing that animals have taught me through all of the communications that I've had at end of life is that they are very accepting of death. 
They, um, they're not anticipating anything. They're not, uh, we as humans, we always anticipate what's coming next or we're always worried about what's happened in the past. Animals are very, very much here now present. And the one thing that they've told me so many times is that they have been created from love. They come mm -hmm. from love and they know that they're going back to love. And I, I, I believe and, and I feel that when they're telling me this, they're talking more from their soul than they are from their physical nature. A lot of people ask me, are they ready? And I always find that the animals will tell me that the only thing that could be holding them back, again, is not that they're afraid or not that they haven't accepted, but what could be holding them back is that they're concerned about their humans. Oh, I love that. They want to make sure that their humans are okay. They want to make sure that their humans are going to be okay. And they want to make sure that they've, they've done what they can to help their humans. So sometimes animals will hold on for us. Um, one of the things that they also have shared with me is that when they start the process of, of their body shutting down, a lot of times we see them, we, we, we watch that physical yeah. part of the body shutting down. And the animals have told me many times that they've already detached. So even though we might be thinking, oh my gosh, like look what they're going through, yes. the animal will, will confirm and say, you know what, I didn't feel all of that. Yes, my body did go through that. And yes, there were certain things that I had to experience, but because they had already started to detach, they already started going back to their home of love, um, that it wasn't as much as what we may have thought it was. That is so interesting because that's exactly um, what every spirit has ever told me, mm -hmm. especially those that are, are um, in the final stages of cancer. Um, you know, anyone that's passed from a disease, a long-standing disease, they've always said, you know, even though it looked rough, it wasn't, it wasn't like I'd already detached. I'd already, you know, made the commitment, but it was um, part of the plan to go through that suffrage that it was, it was mostly for the people they were leaving behind to have them a little bit longer, which, which is interesting because that's exactly what the animals are doing. That's right. And, you know, the interesting thing as well is, well, it, we're all like, obviously, you know, the way I, when I do work with humans, um, cause that's where I primarily do my work, um, or spirit, I should say, um, <laughs> they, they tend to communicate with me through, um, always through the mind. It's telepath telepathic. So it, it never surprised, it's, just, it's not, I don't know why it was surprising to me that you could do this with animals. And so I wanna sort of end this show on this note. Thank you so much, first and foremost, for sharing your wisdom with us today, like beautiful. But if you're at home right now and you have a pet or you have wild birds landing in your yard, or um, you love to be out in nature, today make the intention, and going forward make the intention to communicate with every living creature you see. Just say hello, say hello gorgeous, whatever it is. Do you need my help? Do you need food? Do you need anything like that? And listen to what you're getting, because I clearly, as we can tell from Mary Beth, that really is how they communicate. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I've had such a wonderful time. I thank the animals for bringing us together. I am so grateful. <laughs> okay, take care. All right, thanks, Liz.